How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer uh, Live. We're here every day, yeah, Monday through Friday, uh, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley, and Sundays, 6 p.m. East with me. I'm here. It's Sunday. And boy, do we have a show for you. I got to tell you, man, I had a blast on Wednesday. I know we got a lot to talk about. WWE, the White Rabbit, SmackDown, things going on over there. Of course, Matt Ryan from Catalyst Wrestling is going to join us here on the show today. But holy moly, there's a lot of stuff going on. I was at Grand Slam on Wednesday. And I was there the year before. It was a great time. I was there this year. It was a great time. Uh, very unique venue. Matt and I will talk about it. Because this is in my backyard in Queens, New York. I'm a big New York uh, Mets fan, as you guys could tell. It's been like almost a year now that I've been doing the show. I, t I try to interject the Mets every possibility that I can, especially in the postseason. But, you know, it's a really cool thing. Arthur Ashe Stadium. I was there for the U.S. Open. It's a great venue uh, for me. I don't know for everybody else that's traveling to go there. We'll talk about all those issues. But I had a lot of fun. Great show. Uh, saw a lot of good friends over there. John Alba was there, good buddy of mine, and everybody else I ran into. It was great to see everybody. Rampage results with the great Muda appearing. You know, I, I, I knew he would eventually show up in AEW. This was great. Fantastic. The White Rabbit tease continues on SmackDown. It has to be Bray. I can't imagine it being someone else. I'd be I'd be greatly disappointed if it was. Well, we'll we'll go through that. I want to ask Matt who who could it be without it disappointing somebody that makes sense, right? And of course, that's a great chat. That's a question for the chat room also, and everybody listening. Send me who you think it could be outside of Brian. Tell me why it makes sense. And the Bloodline deliver, delivered one of the best non wrestling segments in a long time. I loved everything about that opening segment. Uh, with the bloodline and with Sammy, and he's an honorary oos now. Absolutely love it for him. But guys, we're going to go to break. I'm going to come back with Matt Ryan from Catalyst Wrestling, talk about Grand Slam and everything else happening in pro wrestling this week. Stay tuned. Andrew Zarian, Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. We'll be back right after this. Wrestling Observer Live, Sunday edition. Andrew Zarian here, joined by Matt Ryan. Of Catalyst Hi. Wrestling, how you doing, Matt? I'm doing good, pal. I'm doing you had a, uh, glad to. Yet you, you were you were recording an eye pay per view last week, so you couldn't join us. No, I couldn't, and I was editing the eye pay per view, which will be dropping tonight on CatalystWrestling.com uh, before there we got we on the air. There we go. It took you 23 seconds. <laughs> Oh, I'm to, sorry. To you left it. that. You left that. That our Arthur Ashe Stadium sized door open. What do you want me to do? Not bachata my way through it. <laughs> Some people, some yes, people, sir. they invite you on to the show. They know you like to plug. I'm not, I, I'm not here to give my opinions. No one wants to hear my opinions. No, about they want to hear your opinions. Listen, there's a lot of stuff happening in pro wrestling right now, obviously. Tons of stuff. Uh, you brought up Grand Slam. Total Grand Slam of a show. Loved everything about it. Uh, disclosure, you know, there were bets on how, what time I would leave the building. Now, <laughs> me exiting that arena has nothing to do with the, the caliber of professional wrestling. It no. has to do with my other responsibilities in life that didn't allow me to stay till See, that's nearly 1 a.m. That's your first mistake. How dare you be a wrestling fan with any responsibility whatsoever? Yeah, I had a, uh, I had a charity your first golf switch. outing I had to be a part of the following day. So <laughs> I, I, I don't think I could talk about it publicly here. But somebody did win. Somebody did win a dinner with uh, the great O.J. Anderson of the New York Giants. Ooh. So let's just, uh, you know, it, it, I, I, I don't think I could talk about it publicly on radio. It was a wild scene. Wild scene. Maybe I'll save that for uh, like a little bonus thing one day. So let's Ooh. talk about this. Grand Slam. You were not there, obviously. You had, uh, you had a bunch not. of stuff going on. You had, I, I, had, I had a professional yeah. obligation. Yes. But. Uh, what did you think? I, I want to compare this with you because I think there's a lot of stuff to be talked about. Being in the building is a very different feeling than be, watching it on TV. Of course. Uh, um, the, you know, I, I, and, and I always feel like when it's a really good show, like All Out last year, I have great difficulty getting the same enjoyment watching last year's All Out on TV, which I had to after I came back from Chicago. And I was like, oh, this wasn't as good as what I experienced in the building. So it just gives you an example of how great that show was. This was a great show and also I... I very much enjoyed the show live. I watched, obviously, all of it 
at home afterwards. And, you know, if I had stayed for the entirety of the show, I'd, I would have probably felt the same, that the the show live was such a stronger show just because of being in that building and seeing how loud it was. But still, mm-hmm. fantastic show. What was your opinion on the show? Did you did you enjoy it? I enjoyed it. Um, I loved the look of it. It reminded me of how the WWE set up WrestleMania 20. If you remember that stage and that setup for WrestleMania 20, that was the first time they did an actual WWE pay-per-view style setup inside Madison Square Garden. And it was a different look and feel than last year's Grand Slam. And I really enjoyed the visual. I liked how they presented everything. I got a chance to watch more of a Rampage than of uh, Dynamite this week. I was planning on catching up, but, you know, real life gets in the way of that. And I know that makes me a terrible professional wrestling fan. But with with shows like Grand Slam, it shows AEW's capacity to get the spectacle of pro yeah. wrestling right. And I think when you're competing against what the WWE is throwing at you right now with Logan Paul and Roman Reigns coming up, you need to show that part of your game as much as possible in ways that make sense. Like yeah, coming up I in a couple of weeks in, in Cincinnati, they can't do it. But when you're in New York, when you're in a major town, you have to make those moments matter. And I think they did. I think you got a lot of a lot of important moments on the show. The show started off. I got there early. I was hanging out with John Alba. We were we were just it was great. And then my wife got posted a photo. I don't know if you saw this. She thought it was me. It was John Alba. Wait, that was not you? That was. Can you believe it? Is that that was your non-union handsome equivalent. That was my non-union handsome equivalent. Yes. <laughs> Is are you are you like a, a like a dictator of something where you just have facsimiles of yourself just po- propagated across the spectrum shows? of Andrew Zarians. <laughs> all different types, all different races. It doesn't matter. Would, it just there's something I would, that you I would to pay see good it. money. You I would pay good it. money to see multiplicity with you in the Michael Keaton role. <laughs> I think good good American currency. Fantastic. Chris Jericho defeated Claudio in that opener match. Great Ring of Honor World Heavyweight mm-hmm. Championship match. Jericho cheated to win the title, uh, playing into the Daniel Garcia storyline that Jericho cheats to win. You know, th- there was, there's a couple things here. One, I, I said this a couple weeks ago, and I still stand by this. I think Chris Jericho having the title is, uh, you know, I think obviously Chris Jericho winning the Ring of Honor title means something to him, obviously. He's somebody that never won that title. He never had an opportunity to wrestle there. He would have if he was in the same, you know, age group as those guys. Um, He could do something very unique and and help the younger talent over there. You know, him and Claudia had a great match. But at the end of the day, a lot of this points to me is that, hey, listen, you're getting closer to that TV deal. You're getting closer to that internet syndication deal, whatever it's going to be. You know what really sweetens that deal, Matt? Having a, a, a seven-time world champion as your as your champion going into TV. Yeah, having one of the most decorated professional wrestlers, the first modern, unified, undisputed champion, uh, that does wonders for you, and it puts him in a unique class with CM Punk to be the only people to hold the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, AEW Championship, and Ring of Honor Championship. And it gives Jericho the case to be the most decorated champion in the history of pro wrestling. As someone who has a lot of emotional connection to Ring of Honor and to that championship, it is so weird. to like If yeah. you asked me in 2007, would Chris Jericho ever be Ring of He would defeat Claudio Castagnoli on TBS to win the <laughs> Ring of Honor World Championship. Yeah. I would chase you down the block with a baseball bat. <laughs> Listen, uh, the, the multiverse thing happened, guys. It happened yeah. to us. It happened to us <laughs> you know, a couple of years ago, and everything kind of shifted. Everything is the same, but not really. No. You know, it's the, like, it's the Chris Chan dimensional merge. It finally yes, happened. It finally happened. Jericho cheated to win it. I, I thought this was great. Big celebration at the end. Uh, I, I, I really, really enjoyed this match. Now, we follow this with straight into bonkersness, right? The acclaimed. Anthony Bowen, Max Caster, uh, really have become two of my favorite wrestlers right now Mm -hmm. uh, in the entirety of the business because of how entertaining they are, how much personality they have. With Billy Gunn defeated Swerve in our glory, Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland, two great competitors. Um, You know, we got got the win, man. We got it, right? AEW World Tag Team Champions, now the acclaimed 
We saw Fabulous come down, spelled F-A-B-O-L-O-U-S. It's engraved in me. That spelling was engraved in me in 2001. <laughs> and DJ Rukid accompanied the acclaimed. Now, the only, you know, we got to see the acclaimed. You know what I want to see? Billy Gunn versus everybody at this point. I want to see Billy Gunn and Keith Lee. I want to see Ooh. Billy Gunn and Swerve Strickland. I want to see Billy Gunn wrestle everybody in this company at this point. He is so entertaining to watch on the outside. Uh, you guys didn't see it on TV, but being in that building, like you look at this guy and you're like, he has that smile on his face, that million dollar tan. He's like 18 feet tall. <laughs> it, it just shows you like, you know, he's another one. Yeah. He has everything on paper. Good worker. Everything on paper. And to be one of the top guys in the business. And he was, you know, to some extent. I, I absolutely love Billy Gunn being with those kids. Yeah, it, it makes the most sense in the world. And to see Anthony Bowen, someone who spent a lot of time in Catalyst Wrestling, get a chance to win in front of a raucous New York crowd. Max Caster, a kid who came out of Creative Pro, really earned his stripes. Um, it was the best development of a tag team we've seen in pro wrestling in quite some time where they're not yeah. a ready-made tag team. Yeah. They, that was an organic thing that got over and stayed over and Bowen's getting hurt may have been, it, it, it's, it stunk for Bowen's cause they got, they were riding a wave, but for that to be the payoff and for everything kind of just to align correctly was one of the best things AEW has done this year it was one yeah. of the smartest moves in a year of really smart moves uh, for all the stuff that's going on in aew they've done a lot of great work yeah we're going to continue this conversation about grand slam and a whole lot more after this wrestling observer live here on sports byline stay tuned wrestling observer live sunday edition with me andrew zarian joined by matt ryan of catalyst Yellow. wrestling i yucked that up a little bit too much at the intro matt what if we just talk like this for the rest of the episode? Oh my gosh! I think I think we I, would lose I, this. I, I think I can do it. I think you can. Unfortunately, where were we? It's in this because awesome I'm show? dead inside. <laughs> That's exactly why. Tony Schiavone interviews Wheeler Yuta. MJF interrupts. So they were doing something really interesting in the in uh, on the screens. Okay, and I'd love to. Mm -hmm. I'd love to ask Tony this, or I'd love to ask somebody in production. You, this. you mean your best friend Tony Khan? Oh, don't start one public look tweet, at me that's all i'm, I'm andrew zarian i'm a part of the glitterati of the wrestling media <laughs> tony khan answers my messages me and nick khan play pickleball every wednesday i play bocce with paul i would love to i want i want to see some paul. invoices from you i want to see some invoices <laughs> from you see if you're on some hypothetical payrolls that don't exist <laughs> You know, you know, I keep saying this. I have no problem being on a hypothetical payroll or a real payroll. Most of the payrolls I'm on are hypothetical in my head at this point. But I listen one one nice exchange and all of a sudden, oh, uh -huh. there you go. You know, I took a beautiful photo. I think that's what it was. I think this awesome picture of just when the pyro's going up, when the show starts. Listen, I I no matter how badly you want, I cannot ask him to come to a Catalyst Wrestling show. OK, well, I, I'm I guess, just what not. About, what there about all the Tony people yet. in? Well, well, but you know, November sec, November six, we got Alex Shelley and Darius Carter. Who doesn't want to come watch Catalyst Wrestling or buy, I actually want to see know, that match. pay per views. Yeah, no, 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 I'm into that. I want to see that match. Maybe mm, I'll make real it to folk that one. lose. You Maybe should. I'll make. Well, it you should. Everybody should. Yeah, Tony Schiavone yeah, interview Wheeler Yuta. So they did something really interesting here. Okay, and and I didn't see anybody talk about this. You know, normally like WWE does um does a thing where if they're doing a promo, right? They're doing an interview. Mm -hmm. They'll turn off the the in-house video so you just have to look at the ring for the promo what AEW did here was really fascinating and if it was a a mistake you know what i gotta tell you that was a happy mistake to have to happen at that moment so they had wheel you to come out it was on the screen you know arthur ash has those big giant screens you're you're watching him yeah. on the screen because you, you know he's on the ramp so it's a little little off in my position and here comes mjf right Immediately, you see it on the screen, and they turned the screen off. So people started booing that the screen was off. But it sounded like you were booing for MJF. That whole building erupted for MJF. So now the promo is happening, and every now and then, they'll turn on the camera, and then they'll turn it off, and they'll turn on the camera, and they'll turn it off on the screen. 
I, so I think I, think I know why that did. is. Well, I, I, I took it as if they were trying to make artificial boos for MJF because it was whenever he was speaking, the camera would turn off and people started booing. Uh, the screen would turn off. You, you kind of add it to the he needs to be a heel, right? Well, he was on the stage, right? Yeah, the he was whole... on the stage. So whenever they're shooting at the stage, they probably don't want that kind of creating that never-ending effect. Like the WWE. No, does no, this. but that whenever... screen, but the screen behind them was the AEW just right, screen. right, 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 right. I, 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 I didn't see this segment, so I'm just trying to guesstimate. It could have been them trying to facilitate some booze in if it was... MJF's home area. If it was, I've never seen it done in wrestling, and I applaud them. If it wasn't, they may have figured out a way to get the building to boo a heel that's getting cheered. Just saying. Yeah, I, I guess you can kind of work that on the reverse psychology side. I, I just thought it was interesting. It could, it could have been a fluke. It could have just, listen, it's a conspiracy theory at this point. Yeah. And I'm going to stick to this one. I'd love to know. I, I'll probably ask somebody. So uh, this led to you, <laughs> Wheeler Yuta insulting mjf he got booed until mjf pushed back and then he beat up tony shivani and how dare he beat up tony shivani uh getting him over as a heel and i guess the program they're going into is yuda and mjf next okay it's it's a nice pass through like you gotta have someone served up between now and full gear yeah to have for sure. and it gives yuda an opportunity to work with a top guy it allows max to work against someone who is a traditional shoot style wrestler, someone he's possibly, I, I'd have to check cage match for this, but they've worked in the same independence before. So it is entirely possible where they faced each other before. I'm sure, yeah. And I think they're going to have good chemistry and I think the match is going to be really good. Yeah. Pac defeated Orange Cassidy to retain the AW Atlantic Championship. This seems to have less heat on TV. Uh, the building got into it. But, uh, you know, it was a midway match. It, it, people were getting a little tired after this. Pack one. Uh, he used the ring bell hammer, which led to the finish. Now, Tony Storm. So this goes into Tony Storm defeating Britt Baker, Serena Deeb, and Athena to retain the interim AEW Women's Championship. The crowd got quiet at this point. And also, Britt took a nasty hit to the nose, bleeding everywhere. The story of this match is what happened after. Yeah. So after... Hater comes out, teasing that she's going to turn on Britt Baker, but attacks Athena instead, and Storm, uh, Athena and Storm, so they're laid out, and here comes Soraya, formerly known as Paige. Yeah, Soraya got the second biggest pop of the night, and it it'll Soraya be interesting. Soraya or Soraya? It's Soraya. Soraya. Per, per her Twitter, she, yes. she explained how to she pronounce it. it. Yes, Soraya. So, listen, uh, does she wrestle? I don't think immediately. Um, the way it seems to be teased on the social medias because angles are done on every single platform ever now, and that's not an indictment on that. It's just it, it's explaining what it is. Jamie Hayter and Soraya had some interactions, and I think that this is going to turn into Soraya getting Jamie to see the light and us seeing a Jamie and Britt Baker feud because – you can't have Britt remain in the title picture forever. You need another feud that you can, you know, put sink her teeth into yeah. and have her feel like an active, consistent part of the roster. You need Tony to move on to other stuff before Thunder Rosa comes back. Try to get the most out of that title reign on whether in whether or not who gets the title after that. It just it makes the most sense. There's a lot of ways to tie that in. And I think we get to the point maybe by the end of the year. Maybe even by Revolution in February, where we see Soraya in a tag match. We'll I would see. not Maybe be surprised. Maybe before. Maybe yeah. before. I I don't know her status. I I really don't know her status. So I'm very curious about this. Yeah. And now the main event: John Moxley defeated Brian Danielson in the finals of the AEW Tournament of Champions for the vacant AEW World Championship. John Moxley now four time World Champion in AEW. Three. They're times. saying three, but four. The, you're counting the interim title. Yeah, of course. I, I, of course. I'm going to have to count it. I mean, he, he was champion, right? He defended that title. Same. He wrestled. He had the title. Uh, you know, four times in a matter of a very short period of time. Mo most of those. Yeah. Um, They did the best that they could with a really crappy situation. I think they did great. I personally really wanted Danielson to win this. I have not been invested in, a, in an outcome of a match for a very, very long time. 
Uh, I would say since we started doing pod, like wrestling podcasts with Matt Men, I really have been able to take myself out of who I want to see win. Yeah. And man, I could not do that for this match. I really want to see Danielson with the title. Uh, I, I still believe he'll be AEW world champion one day. but I think he's the guy to take it off of Max. I, he's I the think guy that... to take it off of Max. Man, that's a great story. And you're, you're developing, you're, you're dedicating a lot of time to this. But. Yeah. You know, I think it would have been interesting to see what the difference would be. You know, John Moxley having a title, he's had it multiple times, but maybe there's a reason for this. I'm sure there is. There always is. I th- so, I think there's more you can get out of Mox and MJF. He's a good analog and good replacement for Punk in that storyline. Um, I think Danielson is the final boss for MJF, and I but think Danielson that Danielson can't cut the mustard. That's the story, right? Yeah, he gets these opportunities. He ties with Kenny. He loses to, to Mox. He lost to Jericho on that pay-per-view. He lost to Daniel Garcia. Maybe something, you know, that could, that could add to the story here. Or Very interesting Takeshi stuff. Morishima comes back, which is what I've been writing in my dream journal <laughs> that, for the past nine years. Is that what you've years. been writing? <laughs> just in my dream journal every night with my feet up. Just I'm going to go through Rampage quickly here. Darby Allen and Sting defeated the House of Black with Julia Hart in a no-DQ match. Big story here was Muda returning at the end. Muda, Muda debuting, I guess. Muda showing up, and he did his funny little hand movements, which I absolutely love. He comes out, yes. looks like a million bucks. He looks like Muda. He's always Muda. He does yeah. the mist, uh, and, you know, I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was great. When, I love that. When I found out that happened, I got so mad that I wasn't there for it. For because Muda? Yeah, because it's Muda. It's yeah. Muda and Sting in the ring in New York City. There's no scenario where that's ever happened. No, that's and never happened. It drove me nuts so that, that I wasn't there for it. Yeah, I get it. Uh, good stuff. I hope to see more of Muda in, in, in the next couple of months here. Maybe they can yeah. do something a little bit more with him. I'd love to see him in, in a match. You know, It's a send-off, so maybe he wants to have a match in AEW. Why not? Hook and Action Bronson, flushing Queens his own, Action Bronson, defeated 2.0. This was fun. Action Bronson is fun. He loves aliens. <laughs> he lights the light up. He, he's big into that. He's from Flushing and he loves food. What's you know, he's the perfect uh perfect degenerate from Queens. I absolutely love it. I I respect it. I'm a big fan of Action Bronson. Um I want to talk about Angelo Parker and Matt Menard for a yes, second. Yes, tell me. Because those guys are people that I have been around and known of for over a decade. And I've always been big on those guys, whether they were the bad boys, whether they were 2.0, 3.0, whatever stage of their career. But right now they are in the they're in the argument for two of the best in the world. In a company where you have some of the best tag teams, and you have the best tag team in the industry, you think, in FTR, you, think that, you think they're two of the best tag teams in the world? I, I, the way that they've sold tickets, the promos they've been cutting, the more of a spotlight they get, the more opportunity they show what they can do. I think that they're going to be AEW World Tag Team Champions. I would want them to take the belts off the acclaim. Love it. A lot more to talk about here. Wrestling Observer Live. We'll be back right after this. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live, Andrew Zarian, Sunday edition. Matt Ryan joining me here on yay, the show. Yay. yay, yay. Let's go into it. I want to I go through this quickly because I, 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 I have a ton of questions about what WWE's been doing. Uh, we, mm-hmm. took, we, we were having too much fun here on the show. Uh, we also got TNT champion Wardlow and the ROH World T- TV champion Samoa Joe defeating Tony Nese and Josh Woods. Jungle Boy defeated Ray Phoenix. Sammy Guevara defeated Eddie Kingston on a reverse decision. Interesting stuff there. They're going to continue that. Jade Cargill defeated Diamante. Adam Page wins the AEW Golden Ticket Battle Royal, last eliminating Roosh. So he is now another number one contender. So what? You have three number one contenders now for the title. And Ricky Starks defeated Powerhouse Hobbs in a lights out match to wrap it up. Very good Rampage. Very good Dynamite. Had a lot of fun watching it. But you know what I'm having a lot of fun with? Um, what, trying what? to figure, get, Getting those messages on Twitter, mm. the DMs with everybody's question about the White Rabbit. 
Oh. Everybody wants to know, including Matt uh, Ryan Martins in our chat, 499 Super Chat. What percentage would you give Bray Wyatt returning to WWE? And what percentage would you say would you give him showing up at Extreme Rules? It has to be him. Um, I, you, you've you you've worked people up so high, mm -hmm. so much that this is Bray. Or maybe you haven't, but people have. How do you debut anybody else? Well, you can't. And at this point, I feel like we all know who it is. But I feel it's Gallagher. Like Gallagher, Gallagher, uh, Gallagher, and Gallagher too. It's a tag team. They're I, returning. I would, I would do what Brody was rumored to do at Mania One: hop the rail and just shoot pummel Gallagher. I would take his mallet. <laughs> I keep forgetting you have heat with Gallagher. I have a legitimate problem with Gallagher. I don't like him. He stinks. He puts people in awkward positions, and he likes to bother people when they're just trying to get coffee for their boss. I would like him to be defenestrated. <laughs> In what front year of did his this, family. What year did this hypothetic, hypothetical uh, incident happen? 2009. There you go. Never forget it, guys. Never, never forget nope. it. Nope. Nope. Matt will never forget it. Uh, but I know I know who the white rabbit is. See, oh, see, tell I've, me. Got, I've got connections on Give the me. inside. Give me. Yeah. Okay. My cousin Rodrigo, he works in the cafeteria over at Titan Tower. <laughs> He's the white rabbit. Is that his nickname? No, no. That's just what he... No, he. that's what... Well, you know, in his past life, he sold a little white rabbit here and there. You know, you got to yeah, pay the got bills. And don't make you a bad person. But no, he heard me. it's down to three people. Okay, give it to me. Bray Wyatt. Okay. Malachi Black. Okay. And Baron Mikel Cicluna. Baron Mikel Cicluna. Yeah. Would you like and, to and, smarten and, everybody up on who that could be? Well, he was a... a a northeastern wrestling talent who was in the World Wrestling Federation and Worldwide Wrestling Federation before Andrew and I were born. Obviously, we're both 24. So this is way, way back when our grandparents were watching wrestling in the 60s and 70s and 80s. But, you know, I could see it being either three of those guys. You know, you okay. got to freshen it up every yeah. once in a while. You got to. And, and Triple H has been doing a great job of honoring wrestling's past and the WWF's legacy. We saw Demolition finally get referenced yeah. for the first time in. Oh, 30 years. So, you know, it, it could be him. Farther. Yeah. Yeah. It could be him. I listen. I, 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 w I have no inside knowledge if it is Bray or not, but it would, it has to be right. Well, didn't the yeah. lights go off when Alexa bliss was having a match, right? Didn't they yeah. do that? Last yeah. Week? They're, they're getting, they're getting slick. Like this era of, of booking in the WWE is relying on, not only working the traditional fan, but it's getting the internet engaged. And I yeah. think it's a really smart thing. It's a way to reverse engineer reactions. Yeah. Well, uh, you and know what it, it is also, right? The what happens when in wrestling is really important, right? What yeah. happens when Cody returns? What happens when Roman loses his title? What happens when... Yeah, uh, you know, Malachi Black possibly return. What happens at the Rumble? These what happens kind of add more intrigue to this. Now, there's multiple questions here, right? Who is the bad? Who is the bad bunny? Who is the bad rabbit? You know what? Maybe it is bad bunny. Or it would. Isn't that a good uh, bad bunny? Yeah, I do a good bad bunny. Uh, it could be him. <laughs> I, I know that. Listen, I know that they they would love to have him back as soon as possible. I know he wants to do something. Too with them, but I, not not for an angle like this. There's no, you know, a lot of carrying cross discussion here. That is a carrying because he used that song on uh, in uh, in MLW. I don't believe so. Carrying no. is married to Drew right now. They're in a feud. I, you're not going to repackage a guy you, that's already been on TV. You're not going to after you this. brought him back and repackaged him to his initial packaging. Yes, you're not going to redo it into a spooky guy again. So it has to be Bray. Now, what do you do with Bray? Right? What happens with Bray? Once you bring him in, who does he feud with? How do you see this going? If it is him, if it is Bray, I re it's if it's on Raw, I really don't know. And, and you can't give him the Roman. Maybe Braun Strowman, I, like Braun, would pr be a good candidate for it. Maybe Bobby Lashley could be a way to get Seth back as a babyface, even though he's doing some of his best work as a heel. I wouldn't want to flip him that, flip him back for that. If Cody was around, he'd be the perfect person. I, I'm going to say, yeah, Cody would be great for this. So, 
I mean, WWE right now has a lot of moving parts here, right? You, yeah. you, you have that world title positioning where you don't know where it's going. You have that Jake Paul match where I'm very intrigued regarding how it's going to come out. Uh, Logan Paul, I should say. Not Jake. Jake has other things going on. Yeah, uh, yeah that... Uh, th dude, did you watch that Bloodline uh, segment? Thought it was great. I, I had to... I scared my dog because oh. I yelled, I love pro wrestling so much. Throughout dog. that segment, Your yeah, my dog. my my poor dog Olive, uh, she she puts up with a lot. Uh, but to to be honest, I thought that was one of the best segments of television all year. Yeah, and it's very well it's, done. It's one of the best SmackDown segments in the Fox era. Yeah, no, great, 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 great segment, fantastic segment. Um, by the way, when you there was a QR code that went up backstage, uh, yeah. it was seen backstage where it was a game. That was kind of like Zelda, like the the original Legend of Zelda, where you had to like go through the you know through the whole uh, through the gimmick, uh, yeah. and it it coordinate the, the coordinates take you to Edmonton for Raw tomorrow. Yeah, and then they leave stuff on people's cars too in the parking oh did they is that what they did yeah yeah I, I saw Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful say uh, that he posted a couple of photos that people sent to him of flyers with those coordinates on people's cars. Raw it's, preview. This looks yep. like a deep. I mean, listen, I, I always say, like, on paper, these are great matches. Sami Zayn mm -hmm. versus AJ Styles. Bianca Belair versus EO Sky. Rey Mysterio, Seth Rollins. Kevin Owens and Johnny Gargano versus Alpha Academy. Matt Riddle, Damian Priest. And then whatever the rabbit is. I, I You know, that's a, that's a great preview. Yeah. And, and for someone who watches wrestling i love a great match but the reason i watch tv wrestling is for the angles and the advancement of the stories mainly because you've been desensitized to match quality in tv matches over the past few years unless it's aew or a different company uh when it comes to wwe stuff i've been more engaged than i've been since uh at least a year um for wwe I've, I, yeah i, I would sell say out more I would say more more than a year for me, especially yeah. with Raw. Uh, I listen. I cover it, so I watch it. But I, I'm I'm going to be honest. I would not have been watching it if I was not doing a show about it. If I yeah, didn't have like, to talk about Raw from that whole pandemic era, even before the pandemic, like late 2019, it, it was not great. Yeah, there was it was rough for me for a litany of reasons during that time period. Um, but I had to stay engaged with the product and, you know, it's fun to actually enjoy watching wrestling on television and not have to feel like it's a chore. Yeah. Uh, that's tomorrow great, will be it? rough because the Giants are playing the Cowboys and the Giants might actually win. So I've got to I've got to bounce back and forth at the house. Split screen. Double screen it, dude. I got to I got to figure Double out how to do it. that. But, you know, like there's a, uh, they have a lot of opportunities here. They have yeah. an opportunity with Drew. They have an opportunity with Karrion Cross. They have an opportunity with the with the Rabbit. They have an opportunity with Cody when he returns back. Solo Solo uh, Sokoa, uh, Sokoa just came up. Yep, very impressive. You could do something with him. Johnny Gargano's back. Uh, Kevin Owens is revitalized a little bit. You know, Seth Rollins is still performing at the best level that he has in a very long time. There are a lot of moving parts here, and and I think it's a very big positive for them. Now execution having these matches on paper and then executing them properly, that's a whole different story. It's very difficult with three hours. Yeah. I think Tony Khan would struggle also with three hours. It's not an easy task to do. Actually, Tony would benefit from it if he had a three-hour show because he probably would not have done Rampage. Yeah, or or he wouldn't. He would be in a better position to be flexible with Rampage or turn it into more of a studio show. I think the thing that hinders Rampage the most is that it's the old Thunder model where you record the shows for the most part after Rampage after Dynamite. And if they did what they're doing with Dark, but a little differently and with a different kind of energy, I feel like it would be really, really, really awesome for them to have that kind of change. And I, also, I wonder about it'd that be always. different than, yeah. Like, I think about that all the time because Rampage is one of the shows that I miss, and they're not bad shows. They're not terrible shows. I just miss it because of the time slot. It's not even yeah. it, It's not even the match structure because I think if they had a better, I, I, I would say I know, if they had a better time slot, the match structures would be totally different. They would be giving away different matches. You know, 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock on a Friday night, 
I'm either just getting home or I've been home and I'm not going to watch wrestling at 10 o'clock at night. I, I it, it, it doesn't connect with me. But again, I'm 38 years old. I got a family. I'm aging out of that key market, that key demo. I'm almost out. Yeah, and I feel like you you need something to make that show DVRable. The problem that, and we can talk about this being people who grew up in the Attitude Era, Raw was more must-see than SmackDown, even though for a certain point SmackDown Always. was the better product. Much better product, because, yeah. Because you'd find out what happened on SmackDown Wednesday morning or Tuesday night. There's no, there's no immediacy there. And wrestling, much like all of live sports, is one of the few products that you have to watch live to really get a sense of what's going on. Because with every form and facet of social media, it makes it near impossible for you to not engage with the world yeah. and not know what's going on on the wrestling show. Like when I was out Wednesday night, I opened Twitter just to promote Catalyst Wrestling. You can buy stuff at catalystwrestling.com. And all of Dynamite got spoiled for me. Yeah. Like just from <laughs> mutuals and from accounts you follow. Just it's just the way things happen. I get and it. I, the spoilers don't the, the spoilers don't bother me as much. The the pre recorded stuff, um, obviously way more musty TV if it's live, but it doesn't yeah. uh, it's not uh, the I don't, I don't know what you could do with that show. But here's the other thing, right? What day do you move it to? Do you move it to a Tuesday? Do you move it? To, you're not moving to a Monday. You're not moving I move Dynamite it to Saturday. To you can move put it on Saturday, a Saturday at 6:05. Like you're not gonna, you're the. It doesn't impede anything. What the, what it does yeah. is it'll help you with your lead-ins. If you have NBA on Saturday, or if you have playoff baseball, which we're getting near, hey man, and let me we're ask seeing. You this. Let me ask you this. Okay. When was the last time you watched baseball on DVR? Just quick question. Or football never. on DVR? Never, right? I can't, never. Interesting. Interesting. Guys, Wrestling Observer Live, Sunday edition. We'll be back right after this. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live, final few minutes. I am watching on the side screen here, Fit Finley and El Dandy from WCW Saturday night, February 20th, 1999. Fit Finley I, with a tombstone pile driver to, to absolutely murder El Dandy for the pin. <laughs> that is that is a choice. That's when they had that the new set, right? Where it looked like they filmed it in MGM. Or yeah, is yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It was a big set. Yeah, it looks much bigger. Yeah, it was with, so weird. I, I, I gave up watching WCW around that time, except for like pay-per-views. So I would watch, I, and you know, somebody asked me that the other day. Somebody asked me, when when did I stop watching WCW? And I never, I was still doing the back and forth when Scott Steiner was their world champion. So like late 99 and 2000, early 2000? Uh, more 2000, yeah, 2000-ish. Uh, I watched about the Vince Russo stuff. I was so intrigued by that, by Russo going there. I watched all of that. So like at least some July 2000, and then that was it. And then every day I would I would just wait till I found out when it was closing. <laughs> Everybody knew it was over. I mean, it really, that's all it was. I, I love WCW and I love so many parts of it, but it really did just find new and interesting ways to step on rakes and ruin any opportunity of success at every turn. When you go through just all the decisions they made predating the sale and there's a lot of great work out there, like Between the Sheets does a lot of good work on stuff like this. There's a lot of great podcasts that kind of help you tell that story. But it's just so interesting to me to see how companies got, and this is just indicative of business in general, how companies get in their own way so much, and especially in wrestling. And that's going to be the biggest problem for a lot of these companies going forward, is just finding ways to not fall, fall on their face or step on rakes. and recover yeah. and i think aew is doing a great job of that and so is the wwe guys that's it we're out of time this week we'll be back next sunday with another episode of wrestling observer live we'll see you all next time guys take care